guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel and way back in January I asked people over on Instagram what their favorite part of the writing process was and I got a whole bunch of responses. A whole bunch of phenomenal responses but one of the things that I keyed in on was that while some people were like drafting, brainstorming about the project, world building, there were a lot of others who gave me very very specific things that they loved like mood boarding or writing action sequences or seeing the drastic difference between the first draft and the final draft. And I thought wouldn't it be fun to put all of these options head to head to see of the thousands of writers who take my polls. What is our collective, our average, favorite thing, favorite little thing about the writing process. So I do want to share real quick that I went ahead and tried to take all of the answers and sort of segment them out to see what appeared most often. For instance, world building gave me 36 responses. I received 24 plotting slash brainstorming responses. 29 people said developing the characters and then 18 said drafting but then 19 more very specifically said the first draft so I kind of split them off. 14 people said outlining but I think as a whole for the kind of big picture-esque things of the writing process, things that we often talk about. Drafting in general just barely took the edge over world building. So then once I kind of threw away the big picture items, I segmented out 25 different responses. Some are kind of close together but like ever so slightly different. A lot of these options are kind of up to interpretation. And so I went over on Patreon with my 25 responses, typed them all out, and then let them tell me which part of the writing process was their favorite. I did allow them to pick multiple answers if they wanted, saying that they should try to stick within two to three answers. Really what I wanted to do was come up with a smaller amount. Okay, so about a week later, if you look at all the options, there are some clear winners that are a little bit higher than others. And then I want to point out there's a three, four, and the worst of the lot, two. Writing action slash fight sequences, which is actually kind of funny timing because the past few Twitch streams last week, people were talking about how they were stuck on a fight sequence fight sequences in space, fight sequences between gods, just being like oh my god this is so tough. So I'm unsurprised that it is the least favorite. So if that was 25 options I'm gonna go ahead and take the lowest one off. That gives me 24. I'm gonna put three of them head to head randomly with one winner and each will get down to eight and then we'll do a more traditional style bracket. Our first competitors. Receiving alpha slash beta reader feedback was competing against having written and naming characters and perhaps surprisingly, perhaps unsurprisingly, having written one in a landslide with 842 votes. Now I just want to give you my opinion real quick. <laughs> I'm looking for the average here so this is great. This is exactly what I wanted but sometimes you know the average surprises you or potentially where you feel versus the average is what surprises you. So while having written is a great feeling where it's like yeah I feel accomplished for the day, I did the thing, my story's progressing, I have written. There is just something about receiving alpha feedback or beta reader feedback that I just love. Because it also means I have written, okay right? So like I've written it to a point where I get that feedback. I don't know what it is but that's what I would have voted for. Me and 138 other people. <laughs> then the initial shiny new idea was up against drafting sex scenes and making playlists for the characters and story arcs. And once again, absolutely demolished with 863 votes for the initial shiny new idea. I will say that 47 votes for drafting sex scenes was the lowest voted item. <laughs> in the entire competition which did make me giggle. And on this note I do completely sit with the average the initial shiny new idea it is just so sparkly, so beautiful. I would have picked that one as well. Then we had getting in the writing flow against writing the first page and building magic systems getting in the writing flow. Once again demolished, destroyed, what competition? Now this is where I think it gets kind of interesting because I think people will define getting in the writing flow a little bit differently or maybe not. What do I know? <laughs> I'm not the average. I cannot peek into everyone's minds though that would be a cool superpower. Anyways getting into the writing flow usually means for me that it's almost like when I'm reading a really good book and I'm no longer seeing the words on the page. I'm just imagining it in my mind. That's kind of what getting in the writing flow for me is like when I'm so in the zone that like I'm not fully comprehending that I'm 
typing. Like, I know I'm typing. I am the one writing it. The story is appearing. Uh, you know, visually, there's a component. But, like, I have fully escaped. I have fully immersed myself into that world. That is the flow. Like, it is uninterrupted. Um, and that is, like, that is a high, <laughs> you know? All that to say, I get why that one won. And for perhaps our closest option so far, we have writing the last page against adding in more description and seeing the drastic difference between the first and last draft. That one won this round. And once again, I am with the winners. Seeing the drastic difference between the first draft and the last draft is just amazing. I also love seeing the drastic difference between the first draft, where I printed it out at in the last draft. It's kind of an interesting section. I might have also printed it out twice. <laughs> but I also do love writing the last page. There's something so wonderful about typing the words to the end and like sending off these characters. But, but yeah, for me, I do think it's seeing the difference between the first and last draft. Actually writing, aka the click clacks on the keyboard versus mood boarding versus developing character friend groups and the clickety clacks won. Now what's interesting for me here is how many votes that mood boarding got. This is one of those ways that I know that I'm not like some writers. I enjoy in theory looking at other people's mood boards like for two seconds, but I'm not about I'm not about mood boarding. I don't know what it is. It is just not for me. I think it is so cool how some people capture their story in their mood board and how it's inspiring to them and how it pushes them. And I think that is so cool. And you know, I, but I just, but it just doesn't do it for me. <laughs> Maybe I should try mood boarding more. It's like not a not a thought in my head, um, but maybe I would be better at describing things if I had the mood board in front of me constantly. Who knows? Or like set it as my computer desktop. I know some people do that, which I, again, very cool, would never be a thought in my mind. So it's funny for me knowing this just to see that it's like hundreds of people pick that one. <laughs> Developing character friend groups though is one of my favorite things and were it not against the like actual writing, um, the cl clacks, I would have picked that one. <laughs> I do think the actual writing click clacks is kind of funny. I think this could be interpreted differently if you just like the sound of the click clacks versus the like process of writing and getting the what all that encompasses for you. Is it just the clickety clackety? Is it the getting the words on the page and like hearing that back and like that's a thing? Or does the click clacks not matter at all to you? So it's how did you interpret that? Then we had writing cute squee moments versus the moment you realize your story could be something and you're not just wasting your time, versus crafting character outlines slash bios. And so the moment you realize the story could be something won that round. I absolutely loved the submission of the moment you realize your story could be something and you're not just wasting your time. Love it. Sometimes for me, it's not that I'm wasting my time so much as I realize that I'm successfully putting onto the page what I'm seeing in my head. Like it's the moment I realize it, I could potentially share something and like it be what I want to share. Um, but the moment you realize it could be something like that's just uh, what a great, what a great feeling. <laughs> Finally drafting a scene you've been thinking about for ages versus rereading the project versus printing out your WIP and finally drafting that scene you've been thinking about for ages one. And then once again, I'm with the majority. While I adore rereading my project and like picking at ways that I could do, do it better for the next draft or the next revision, there's something about finally drafting the scene you've been thinking about the whole time that is often what I think about when I think about writing in the writing process. It's like uh, where I go from brainstorming this, the initial shiny new idea, and then finally being like, okay, I've had enough of these ideas that have all combined and built into a thing that I can write this scene. Like it has all, it's been this most beautiful, perfect storm. And now I may put it on the page. <laughs> For our last matchup, we had map making versus coming up with a good title versus writing scenes that make you cry. And this final battle was such a weird one for me because frankly, I don't know that I like it. <laughs> I'm terrible at coming up with titles. I'm not that great at map making and writing scenes that make me cry are nice in like a cathartic kind of way and that it's all been building to this and like, oh, it's happening or I'm terrible at like destroying my characters and just hurting them. But I, I don't like the act of crying over my own story sometimes. Like, I think it's really cool that I'm capable of doing that, but I just like physically crying while I'm trying to type it out is not what I enjoy. 
But alas, as I only had the three options, that is also the one I would choose. So I guess I was only different on one. <laughs> So now that we had our eight winners, I could go into a more traditional bracket, which is exactly what I did on brackethq.com. So I inputted the eight winners and then randomized them once more so that seeing the drastic differences between the first and last draft was up against actually writing click clacks on the keyboard. This was a parenthesis. <laughs> Finally drafting that scene that you've been thinking of was up against the moment you realized the story could be something and you're not just wasting your time. Then the writing flow was up against the initial shiny new idea and having written was up against writing scenes that make you cry. I will say the most disappointing in this randomization for me was the writing flow versus the initial shiny new idea. If I had to pick like a top four, a semi-finals, those two would be in it. So I already knew one of my personal top four was gonna be eliminated too early on. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I think another head-to-head -head was the other two I would have chosen. <laughs> so seeing the drastic differences between the first and last draft and actually writing AK the click clacks on the keyboard would have been rounded out my semi-finals. But alas, those were not the options we were given. The general consensus was actually writing the click clacks on the keys got 58% of the vote over seeing the drastic difference between the first and last draft with a 42%. And in our closest race, the moment you realize the story could be something and you haven't just been wasting your time, won 54% up against 46% from finally drafting the scene you've been thinking about for months. Getting in the writing flow won pretty handedly over the initial shiny new idea, as did having written with 72% of the vote over 28% from writing scenes that make you cry. And now we had our semi-finalists. And actually writing the click clacks on the keys lost out to the moment you realize the story could be something and you haven't just been wasting your time. 408 votes to 499, so pretty close. And actually what I think is particularly telling is that a couple people just fully skipped this question. They skipped it and they moved on to the next one and voted there. So that one had a little over 900 voters. And then the next one, which was an easy victory to getting in the writing flow against having written 709 to 243, had about 50-ish more voters, right? So 50 people I'm assuming were just like, how could I choose? <laughs> which I feel. I totally skip poll questions sometimes and I'm just like, ah, I don't know, don't make me think this hard. <laughs> and that just left our finalists. Getting in the writing flow versus the moment you realize the story could be something and you haven't been wasting your time. And getting in the writing flow won 544 to 368. Again, it really is like a high. <laughs> but because I was curious, um, because that one vote was so close and some people skipped it, I decided that I was going to go to the YouTube community tab and ask the poll question, but with all four semi-finalists as a possibility. Now I'm actually recording this video only two hours after I asked the poll question, but when I'm editing this video it'll be a little bit later since, so I'll go ahead and put the most recent results up on the screen so that y'all can see. But once again, getting in the writing flow, clearly the winner. As of right now, 52% and actually the second place, realizing the story could be something you're not just wasting your time, was right. So like the finalists were the finalists they should have been at least of the semi-finalists. <laughs> Actually writing the click clacks on the keys got about 11% of the vote, followed by 7% for having written. And of course, 3% of the people who voted just wanted to see the results. So it'll be interesting for me, editing me, to see if that has changed at all or if the distribution is basically the same. But I am curious if you could define what the writing flow means to you, how would you describe it? I guess it's unsurprising that writers love getting in the writing flow. <laughs> My favorite part about running, for instance, is getting in that running zone where I basically have forgotten that I'm running. The first several minutes is not that fun, but then after that, I'm like, this is great. I like doing this. So I think similarly, that writing flow is like the magic. I'd also love to know if your favorite little thing about the writing process was not any of these potential options. What is it? And if you would like to argue in favor of a quickly cast aside possibility. <laughs> I would love to hear it. Are you also seeking justice for receiving alpha or beta reader feedback? <laughs> but that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for playing my game. I always have fun with these. And thank you especially to some of my new patrons this month. Florida Beak 97 Dirty Monarch, Megan N. Hull, Ivan, and Sage Crow. And I will see you all very soon with a new video. Bye. <laughs>